I don't know about you guys, but every time I finish watching RLCS, I get so hyped to play Rocket League that I launch the game and queue up some ranked matches thinking I can do anything they can do. Unfortunately, it's always revealed to me that considering I can't rank up against solo queuing prodigies at GC, I'm probably not going to be going pro anytime soon. When we watch RLCS, we often overlook the most important details to why the pros are the best of the best. More specifically, the decisions they make that keep them at the top. Today, I'm going to quiz you guys on your mental ability to make the right choices at the right time. We're going to start off with some platinum level gameplay and work our way up to grand champ. Let me know how many you got right in the comments. Alright, here we have our first platinum player, Adriel4470. What do you think he should do here? Is it A, sit and wait front post, B, sit and wait back post, or C, cheat up near the play? The answer is B, sit and wait back post. Apparently Adriel4470's favorite letter in the alphabet is C, so he decided to cheat up near the play, which ultimately led to him bopping it in his own net. Yikes. Here's why he should have stayed back. When you're the only one defending the net, the easiest save to make is when it's right in front of you. The hardest save to make is when it's right behind you. I can't even tell you how many times I've easily scored on someone just by shooting it right behind them in net. When you stay back post, no matter where they shoot it, it's going to be in front of you. This allows you to anticipate the shot slightly before they would even hit it since you know it's going to be in front of you. If you wait in the middle of the goal, it could either be in front of you, or behind you, or right at you. And when they shoot it behind you, it's pretty much a free goal for them. Alright, situation number two. What should this player do here? Is it A, go to the back post, B, jump up and hit the ball, or C, wait lower midfield? The answer is C, wait lower midfield. Obviously, he shouldn't jump up for the ball because, I mean, look at this. And he shouldn't go back post yet because there isn't any immediate threat. He should wait lower midfield to see what happens and then decide if he can safely challenge the ball or go back. Alright, our last platinum player. What should he do here? Should he A, wait right where he is, B, go back to defend, or C, challenge the ball? The answer is A, wait right where he is. If we were to challenge the ball right here, that would be an obvious double commit, and we just saw our other teammate commit hard up field, which makes this guy the last line of defense. However, that doesn't mean he should go directly back on defense here. He doesn't know if his teammate is going to hit the ball yet, so he should wait to see if he does. If he gets a good hit, he can stay midfield and hope the ball comes his way for a pass. If his teammate doesn't hit the ball, he can easily shadow defend and push the ball to his corner to give his team time to recover. If you don't know what shadow defending is, I'll leave a good video for it in the description. Alright, moving on to diamond rank. What should this player do? Should he A, go to the front post, B, go to the back post, or C, challenge the ball? The answer is B, go to the back post. Hopefully you learned from question 1 that the best place to defend the net is the back post. This time, there is an immediate threat since the ball is right in front of the goal and his other teammate won't be back in time soon since we just saw him commit up field. And he shouldn't challenge the ball because that would be an obvious double commit. Question 5. What should this player do? Should he A. Challenge the ball, B. Turn and go back, or C. Go upper midfield? The answer is C. Go upper midfield. Once again, challenging the ball here would be double committing, so definitely don't do that. And you shouldn't go back because there's nothing threatening and you know your third teammate is already behind you since you saw him before. You should go upper midfield because the net is wide open and if your teammate can get it past these two poorly positioned players, it's basically a free goal. This player did do the right thing, but his teammate cut him off anyway, which happens at every rank, so don't even worry about it. It's nothing you can control.
Number six, what should he do here? Is it A, turn and go back, B, wait where he is, or C, jump up and try to score? The answer is C, jump up and try to score. Although he is the last man right now, he can see his teammate is rotating behind him which allows him to push up field if he wants. He also shouldn't just wait here because he is in the best position to hit the ball right now. He has 100 boosts and a perfect front angle on the ball. It's much easier for him to hit the ball than the defender. That's a pretty tough read for a diamond player. Alright, moving on to champ level gameplay. What should this player do? Should he A, go back post, B, go lower midfield, or C, go back right? The answer is A, go back post. Although this may not seem that threatening, it's actually pretty dangerous. The teammate with the ball was just forced to jump to dodge a demo, and the other teammate is way over in the back right part of the field. The last thing you want on defense is to put all three of your players on the same side of the field, which resulted in a goal here. You also don't want to go lower midfield since Daly over here can safely challenge the ball before you since there's a defender behind him. So this is actually a pretty dangerous situation, it just may not look like it. Number 8, what should this player do? Should he A, go midfield for a redirect play, B, go back post, or C, wait where he is? The answer is B, go back post. Even though he knows he has a teammate behind him, the ball is going to bounce off the backboard which is a pretty hard clear for a low champ player. He also shouldn't stay where he is because that would leave all three players on the same side of the field on defense. Going back post is the safest way to not get scored on here. Number 9, what should this player do? Should he A, go back post, B, go for boost, or C, clear the ball to the corner? The correct answer is A, go back post. You're probably noticing a pattern here. In this case, he knows both of his teammates are back, so at least one of them is definitely going to try and make the save. Even though he can easily clear the ball to the corner here, that would be a guaranteed double commit. He also shouldn't go for boost here since he already has 50, which is plenty enough to make a save. Going back post here would allow his teammate to go up and make the save, and him to be ready for the next one. Instead, we see him cut off his teammate due to a complete lack of trust, which leads him to losing the game in overtime. We see this a lot at champ level. One player thinks he's better than both his teammates, so he tries to carry them. When that fails, he blames his team for the loss and continues thinking he deserves to be a higher rank. If you find yourself in this situation, even if your teammates are in fact much worse than you, you still need to trust them because I guarantee there's no way you can 1v3 the other team. Moving on to some really high level gameplay over at Grand Champion. What should this player do? Should he A, shoot the ball on net, B, pass the ball down to the right, or C, pass the ball down to the left? The answer is C, pass the ball down to the left. The net looks wide open right now, but by the time he actually reaches the ball and the ball travels from his car down to the net, the last defender would already be back in time for the save. So the best option here is to pass it. We saw one teammate back to our right, but that wouldn't be a very productive pass since he's the last man back and he couldn't get a good shot from there. And all three defenders are on that same side. We also saw another teammate in the top left portion of the field. He is wide open and has a good angle to shoot on since the last defender is in the opposite corner. So he's definitely the right person to pass to. Number 11, what should this player do here? Should he A, grab the mid boost pad and use it to get back, B, go straight back but grab mini pads along the way, or C, turn and shadow defend immediately? The answer is B, go straight back and grab mini pads along the way. If he were to shadow defend here with no boost, the other team can easily just boom it over him for an easy goal. Here we see him go for the mid boost pad and he just barely can't make it back in time. 
so what he should have done is go straight back. If he goes for mini pads along the way, he can boost the entire way back since he keeps collecting more and more after each pad he goes over, and it's a shorter distance. Since he went for mid boost, he traveled this entire way with no boost, and then began using boost once he picked it up, and only had 30 boost by the time he got back anyway. Number 12. What should this player do? Should he A. Go up for the ball immediately, B. Shadow defend, or C. Go upper midfield for a pass? The answer is A. Go up immediately. He shouldn't shadow defend here because one of his teammates is behind him anyway, so it wouldn't do any good. And even though his teammate is on the wall there, it would be really tough for him to pass it mid, especially with two defenders sitting right there in the way. If he jumps up now, he'll either get a huge dunk leading to a possible goal, or he'll force the defender to send it away where his teammate behind him can take possession. How did you guys do? Did you get them alright? Leave a comment down below how you did. The thing that makes the pros so good is not only their ability to make these decisions correctly, but their ability to make these decisions in less than a second. The most impressive thing about pro gameplay to me is how fast they think. You wouldn't notice it as a casual viewer, but when you really look in detail and compare it to your own gameplay, it's really cool to see. Anyway, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you later.